Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror, sci-fi film called Alien. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A commercial space cargo vehicle, the Nostromo, detects a mysterious transmission on its way back to Earth. The ship's artificial intelligence, Mother, wakes up the crew from stasis to investigate, Warrant Officer Ripley, Captain Dallas, Executive Officer Kane, Navigator Lambert, Science Officer Ash, and Engineers Parker, and Brett. After analyzing the ship's condition, Lambert sees that they have gone off course while Ripley cannot contact traffic control for assistance. Dallas explains that Mother changed their course after detecting the transmission and, as protocol, they must investigate it. Lambert plays the transmission, which is coming from a nearby planetoid, but it's not like any signal they've heard before. The team detaches the Nostromo from the cargo ship and heads to the planetoid to begin their operation. Their landing causes damage to the ship, leaving the team stranded while Brett and Parker repair the damages. Dallas, Kane, and Lambert head out to investigate the source of the signal while Ash monitors their feed. The trio navigates through the harsh environment until they discover an alien spacecraft that seemed to have crashed onto the planet. Their connection to the Nostromo is interrupted as they enter the ship, losing their communication with Ash. The three enter the alien ship, observing the strange design in the darkness. They climb to the control room and find the deceased giant humanoid creature that seemed to be the ship's pilot. Back at the Nostromo, Ripley successfully translates the transmission, which she declares as a warning, not an SOS she wishes to warn Dallas and his crew, but Ash suggests that she stays. In the spacecraft, Kane finds a hole that leads to a vast cave-like area. With heavy breaths, Kane searches the area, seeing eggs under the blue mist. While observing the mist, Kane slips down. He walks to the eggs, curious about the strange objects. Shining a light on one, he confirms a living creature still inside. The egg opens up like a flower, revealing a small throbbing creature. Kane goes closer to investigate but is jumped by the reptilian creature, grabbing his face. Dallas and Lambert carry the unconscious Kane back to the Nostromo. With the creature still attached to Kane, Ripley refuses to open the ship as per quarantine protocols. But Ash opens the door instead, letting the trio in. In the infirmary, Dallas and Ash remove Kane's broken helmet, revealing the face hugger still attached to him. When Ripley arrives, Lambert hits her, angered that she wanted to leave them in the sanitation area. Uncertain of what the creature is, Ash carefully moves one of its fingers, but the face hugger coils its tail tighter around Kane's neck. They put Kane inside the X-ray machine, observing that the creature is keeping him alive. Dallas orders the creature to be removed, despite Ash's warning that it might kill Kane. With Kane set on the table, Ash makes an incision on the face hugger, but its blood drips, melting a hole in the floor. The acidic blood penetrates its way two levels down the ship before stopping. Seeing the damage the face hugger's blood caused, they postpone the operation and focus on repairing the ship. Ash continues to study the creature, still uncertain of what it is. Ripley asks his findings, learning that the face hugger's cells turn into polarized silicone to withstand adverse conditions, making it difficult to destroy it. Ripley criticizes him for breaking the quarantine law, reminding him that she's in charge of the Nostromo when Kane and Dallas are out of the ship. Ash defends that he is merely doing his job. Later on, Ash calls Dallas and Ripley back to the infirmary. The face hugger is gone, but Kane is still alive. The three cautiously search the infirmary, knowing that the creature could still attack them. Ripley checks Kane, jumping when the face hugger falls on her shoulder. She throws it on the floor and sees it unmoving. Ash takes the creature and studies it. Fearing what it could do, Ripley urges them to get rid of it, but Ash intends to study it further, as it is the first time they have encountered such a creature. Dallas allows Ash to decide what to do with it. Walking away from the infirmary, Dallas explains to Ripley that their contracts dictate that he only commands the ship, but Ash is in charge of the science division, therefore, it's Ash's call on what to do with the creature. Despite the unfinished repairs, Dallas orders them to exit the planetoid and connect back to the cargo ship. With the team's effort, the Nostromo launches off successfully. Resting at the dining hall, the team discusses what to do with Kane. Parker suggests freezing him to stop whatever disease he may have. Dallas finalizes that Kane will go into quarantine, to which Ripley suggests that they all will after being exposed to him. Lambert reports that it will still take 10 months to return to Earth, dampening their mood further. Kane finally awakens in the infirmary, seemingly fine yet still confused about what happened. With Kane's recovery, the crew enjoys a feast before being put back in cryosleep for the rest of their trip home. 
The feast ends when Kane starts choking. He convulses on the dining table, grunting in pain. The men attempt to hold him down, but something shrieks as blood splatters from Kane's chest, causing everyone to recoil. Kane continues to convulse, red in pain. His chest bursts open, revealing a tiny creature coming out of his body. Lambert shrieks in horror as the creature moves around as if inspecting them. Ash stops Parker from attacking the creature, believing that it may have the same acidic blood as the face hugger. The creature wails then runs away, retreating to the air vents. Before dealing with the creature, the crew takes a moment of silence for Kane before launching his body into space. Afterward, Brett constructs cattle prods to eliminate the alien creature without going near it. Ash shows a tracking device that will give off a signal when it detects movement. Dallas splits them into two teams, ordering them to capture the creature and send it into the airlock. Ripley searches with Parker and Brett, armed with cattle prods and a net. They head inside the supply room, detecting something inside one of the closed drawers. The three prepare themselves for the creature, holding out the net and cattle prod in case it attacks. Parker opens the door, only to reveal the crew's cat, Jones, inside. Once the adrenaline washes off, the three laughs it off. Parker tells Brett to chase after the cat so they can't mistake it for the creature again. Following the cat inside the Nostromo's hold, Brett hears something moving above his head, but the cat meows in another direction. He finds Jones hiding behind machinery, scampering away in fear. Once the cat is away, Brett picks up a skin-like material from the floor. Recognizing it from the alien creature, he drops it and continues to look for Jones. Water drips from above the landing leg compartment, imitating rain. Brett takes a moment to enjoy the rain, not noticing a creature hiding in plain sight. Brett finally locates Jones, but it hisses at him. The fully grown alien hangs behind Brett, scaring the cat while Brett remains unaware. Finally realizing that Jones is afraid of something else, Brett looks behind. Frozen in fear, the alien grabs Brett by his head and pulls him up. Ripley and Parker hear his screams, seeing the blood but Brett and the alien are nowhere in sight. The crew regroups, discussing their next options. The alien has retreated into the air ducts, allowing Dallas to calculate where it could head next. He intends to trap the alien and lead it to the airlock to send it into outer space. With Parker and Lambert guarding the opposite opening and Ripley and Ash managing the control system, Dallas goes inside the ducts with a flamethrower to force the creature into the airlock. He struggles between the cramped space, listening to Lambert's directions on where to go. But Lambert's tracking device loses the signal, halting Dallas' progress. Dallas finds slime on the floor but doesn't see the creature anywhere. The tracker starts beeping, showing something moving towards Dallas. Lambert cries for him to run away, but the creature ambushes him. After losing communication with Dallas, the surviving crew meets up again, hoping to find another way. Parker is enraged, and Lambert is filled with grief. Ripley suggests following Dallas' original plan, but Lambert is terrified of abandoning the ship, but their shuttle cannot support four people. Parker rejects the idea of escaping, wanting revenge against the alien. Ripley, now in charge after Dallas is gone, pulls her crew together. She insists on flushing out the alien into the airlock, but they will be more careful this time. She orders Parker to refuel the flamethrower and asks Ash if he has any other information or suggestion. When he denies it, she asserts that she will collect information directly from Mother instead. Inside Mother's system, Ripley accesses the ship's logs, seeing that Ash has been secretly ordered to retrieve the alien, even if it meant the crew's lives. The revelation has Ripley exasperated, not noticing that Ash is sitting next to her. She lunges at him, enraged that her people have been betrayed. Ripley heads out, hoping to check on Lambert and Parker, but Ash closes the doors on her, preventing her from telling the rest. She confronts him, stunned to see white liquid dripping from his forehead. Ash pulls her hair and throws her down and against the wall. With Ripley indisposed, Ash prepares a magazine to insert down her throat, choking her. Parker and Lambert find them, but Ash overpowers them. Parker slams a fuel tank on Ash's shoulder, freeing Ripley. Ash seizes and spins, spewing liquid from his mouth. Parker hits his head, revealing that Ash was a robot all along. The mechanical body continues to fight despite its damages. Lambert stabs it with a pole, finally disabling him. Moments later, Ripley navigates through Ash's wiring to reactivate him. Once he's reactivated, Ash reveals that he was specifically designed and added to the crew to retrieve the alien specimen alive. Ripley asks how they can exterminate the alien, but Ash reveals that they cannot. He deems the creature a perfect specimen, admiring its purity and lack of morality. Before Ripley deactivates Ash, he smiles, mocking their slim chance of survival. With Ash out of the way, Ripley decides to take Lambert's idea, escape to the shuttle and blow up the ship, 
the alien along with it. Out of rage, Parker incinerates Ash's body before they leave. Ripley heads to the shuttle to prepare their escape while Parker and Lambert gather coolants for the trip. While activating the shuttle, Ripley hears Jones and investigates. Meanwhile, Lambert and Parker arrive at the hold. Lambert hurriedly gathers the supplies while Parker keeps watch for the alien. Once they've gathered all the coolants from the machines, they move to collect more from the suits and the supply room. Ripley searches for the cat in the shuttle, hoping to save it. Jones startles Ripley, making her jump. With all the fright she went through, Ripley tearfully gathers the cat into a cage. In the supply room, Lambert spots something moving in the shadows. The alien corners her, now standing taller than her and Parker. Parker tells her to run, but Lambert is frozen in fear and despair. Parker lunges to save his teammate but is captured. Parker yells for her to run just before the alien eliminates him. Lambert cries in fear, unable to move. Hearing their cries, Ripley runs to the supply room to help them. Before she could reach them, however, the screams stop abruptly. She goes inside and sees that Parker and Lambert are dead. Mixed with panic, confusion, and grief, Ripley heads to the engine room and activates the Nostromo self-destruction system. Her face filling with tears, she hears the system announce that the self-destruct mode is starting. The ship fills with steam as Ripley runs back to the shuttle. With a flamethrower in one hand and several coolants tucked on the other, broken yet still determined to survive, Ripley retrieves Jones and hurries back to the shuttle. With only three minutes left before the detonation, Ripley spots the alien blocking her path. Heart pounding loudly, she runs back to the engine room, disabling the self-destruct. But the override doesn't work and only buys her an extra five minutes to escape. The frustrated Ripley runs back to the shuttle, carefully checking if the alien is still around. Seeing no sign of it, she carefully moves forward, seeing that the cat is unharmed. She grabs Jones and steps inside the shuttle, gasping for air once she closes the doors. With one minute left, Ripley hurriedly activates the shuttle, fastening herself as the aircraft prepares to launch. Mother counts down to the Nostromo's destruction as the shuttle speeds out. Ripley watches with cold eyes as the Nostromo explodes into a bright light, ending the journey for her crew. Ripley falls limp on her seat, thinking of her team. She closes her eyes, grasping the idea that the alien went down along with the spacecraft that she called home. After taking time to rest, Ripley prepares her cryosleep. She takes Jones, cradling the cat before loading it into the first chamber. Then, she prepares her chamber but checks the shuttle system before going in. A hand moves, startling her. The alien has wedged itself into the shuttle's engines, escaping with her. Ripley hides in the cabinet and into a spacesuit, keeping her eyes focused on the vicious creature. Quietly, she loads a harpoon gun before opening the door. Ripley leaves the cabinet slowly, avoiding the alien's attention. She sings softly to herself to calm her nerves as she blasts gas to lure out the alien. Ripley turns away when it falls on the floor, hoping that the alien won't see her. The alien appears beside her, screeching as Ripley opens the airlock, driving the alien out the door. The creature is sucked into space but grabs hold of the door. Ripley fires the harpoon gun, forcing it to release. When she closes the door, the gun gets stuck inside, allowing the alien to pull the rope and climb into one of the shuttle's exhaust. Ripley blasts the engine, incinerating the alien inside the exhaust. She watches it blast off into outer space, finally rid of the nightmarish creature. With the fight finally over, Ripley records her report on what happened to Nostromo and her team. She goes back into hypersleep while the shuttle takes her back to Earth. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.